is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Uh, Mike says, Tua has a 5-1 to one TD to interception ratio. He's not always finding the right answers, but at least he's not making bad decisions. A la Dwayne Haskins. Right? You know, if you're going to complain about a quarterback, you complain about Dwayne Haskins. Don't complain about Tua, dude. I mean, you know, if Tua was out eating crap, if he was doing Johnny Manziel, then fine. Then let's rip Tua. But it's not like he's he's not playing crappy. He's just not elite right now. <laughs> oh, man. Steven says, absolutely. Tua will have trouble tomorrow, no doubt. But this is how he works through it by doing it. He's going to be fine. A really solid QB, I think, for a long time. Could even be great. I'm with you. I think he will be great. I wanted to touch base on that, Steven. I'm glad you brought that up. Because I made a note of that when I was preparing for the show. And do you realize that this year and this season, a kid that had no offseason spent his entire time repairing his hip, okay, to get it ready so he can play a, an NFL season. And, and so far he's got 13 touchdowns and two interceptions, I believe. I believe he's rushed for, for three touchdowns and he's thrown 10 and he's thrown two interceptions. So he's got a 10 to 2 touchdown to interception ratio, passing a total of 13 touchdowns, right? And one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about is this is a kid that didn't have an offseason, yet they threw him in the fire with the Rams, with the Chiefs, and now this last game of the season at the Bills. You, you realize he, he played the three toughest games of the year. I mean, it's pretty impressive, okay? And he's 1-1 one one so far in those games. And he had a hell of a performance against Arizona. People seem to kind of forget that when they're slamming the kid for no reason at all. But you, you got to understand, th this young hombre has got to be a, an incredibly tough cookie because one you dislocate your hip. You then now have to make the decision, do I go back to play this brutal game? Kid doesn't hesitate. He goes to rehab. He works his ass off in rehab. It gets in the way of his preparation for the draft and everything else. And then also, you got COVID, which then takes away prepare for the season. Okay, not that he was 100% even throughout the, the NFL se the offseason, but at one point or another, you know, he was going to be clear to play, but didn't get a real training camp, didn't get a real preseason, didn't get an opportunity to really get himself acclimated to his new teammates, his receivers, all of that. None of that ever happened. So then the season starts with very little preparation, and you've got to start the at this point in time and then by the time you think the kid is ready because technically that first six weeks of the season was his training camp was kind of like his preseason he didn't really play but it was kind of one of those mental like preseasons you throw him in there to the Rams and you know it's funny because when when Ben Volan tweeted out they don't trust him you know I, I tweeted back to Ben Volan. They don't trust him. They started him against the Rams and the Chiefs. You don't know what you're talking about. That, that's the ultimate sign of trust. So this is a young man that one of you said that that's how he gets through it by doing it on Steven, right? And that's exactly what Flo is thinking. He's like, well, I got to get this young man prepared, and I got to find out more about him. Well, let me put him through the ringer here. Let me put him in some difficult situations, and let's see how he performs. So, so far, he's one and one in those games. We'll find out t tomorrow 
what he does against the Bills. And is he supposed to struggle? Probably. Should he lose? Probably. But it's not because he's a loser or anything along those lines or he's not good enough. It's because the Bills are better. The Bills have have the better team right now. And they're home. They've won 12 games. Miami's won 10. They beat Miami the first goal round. They're playing better football. So they're the better team right now. They got into the playoffs last year with 10 wins. Now they're there looking for their, their, their 13th win of the season. So they're not supposed to win tomorrow. Can they? Hell yeah, they can win it. I think the Dolphins can win this game. Intelligence that you expect them or demand them to win and demand Tua to be great in this moment when they've had very little to prepare compared to Buffalo. Buffalo's been developing this team for over three years now. They've been developing this quarterback for three years. Miami is, what, 10 games? Nine, tomorrow will be 10. Not even an entire season with your first QB. It's it's a really difficult, you know, um, path to navigate for the Dolphins. But it's awesome that they're here at this point. It's pretty amazing, actually. That's why I keep telling all of you out there, can you just enjoy the ride? It's been a phenomenal ride. I don't need to see any more from these guys. I've seen enough. I know that they're going to be a hell of a team down the line. But they're really green all over the place. So we got to give them time to grow, you know? We got to give Noah time to grow. We got to give uh, Austin Jackson time to grow. We we got to give Solomon Kinley time to heal and grow. Robert Hunt and so on and so forth. I I just find it really odd the the unrealistic demands sometimes that that people have on these players and this team right now because they spoiled you incredibly this season. They 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 exceeded expectations at a level that none of us really expected. So we got to, you know, take a step back and enjoy what's going on. And not be so critical about everything right now. There'll be a time to be critical in another year or two when when there's more of an even level playing field, when their team has had time to develop, when the coach has had time to figure it out, when, when everybody has already matured. You know what I mean? That's when we can start to put a little bit more demands and expectations. But when this is the first goal round for Andrew Van Ginkle and this is the first goal round for Austin Jackson and Nick Needham and everybody else that's on this team, you got to slow down, man. got to slow down. There's, there's not a lot of players on this team that know about a lot of success. Hell, Byron Jones has been in the league uh, for a while now, and he has no idea what success is like because he's played for the Cowboys. You know? And I'm sure this has been shell shock to him, watching how this organization's run the clown show that he came from in, uh, in Irving. So I'm just, I'm glad you brought it up, Stephen. I just think we need to kind of slow things down a little bit and take a step back and realize what they're actually trying to accomplish and what they're doing. Uh, you talking about the Kansas City, uh, them facing Kansas City, facing the Rams. It reminded me of a segment you did earlier this week on the 31st, segment two, where you were talking about that Fitz getting COVID. Flores is kind of liking the fact that two is yeah. being put to the fire. Right. Okay. To right. get a test, right. to see where he's at. Exactly. It connects with that. It's uh, December 31st, the second segment. Uh, there you go.